One thing that the recent console generation has brought to us are glorious ports, and a lot of people don't like ports of old games on new systems, but I can sort of see why it does happen. The PS4 and the Xbox One had a ton of ports in its first year, but I get it. It makes sense. A lot of people did not play these games on their other platforms, so to bring a game like The Last of Us Remastered, that totally makes sense from a business perspective, considering that a lot of PS4 owners were previously Xbox 360 owners. You're starting to see ports come to the Nintendo Switch as well, and once again, I don't hate it. Some of these ports I think are really good. Games like Doom and Skyrim. I was a huge fan of Doom on the PS4, so to be able to revisit the game and take the game wherever I go with me just made sense. A game like Skyrim, that's a game you could play for hundreds and hundreds of hours and never get bored with it, never get tired of it because there's so much to do, so much to see. And as long as the ports are optimized and add in different things and take advantage of the hardware, I'm cool with it. Ports are not necessarily a bad thing. Plus, at the end of the day, you don't have to buy the port. But we're starting to see some more Wii U games come to the Nintendo Switch, and a couple people are getting concerned that maybe we're starting to see too many ports on the platform. But once again, I get it. The Wii U did not sell that well. It sold pretty badly, to be honest with you. So these Wii U exclusive games can really find a home on the Nintendo Switch. Games like Pokemon Tournament and Mario Kart 8 got versions released on the Nintendo Switch. We're seeing Bayonetta 2 being released in a dual pack for the Nintendo Switch as well, which are games that a lot of people did not get to play unless they owned a Wii U, of course. Now, the last two announcements of ports coming to the Nintendo Switch that were Wii U games are Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition and Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. And some people are thinking that these games are a bit overpriced. Right now at the time of this video, these games have $60 placeholders and it doesn't look like those are going to change. So are Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze and Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition overpriced? Should they be less priced? You know, should they be like 40 bucks, 50 bucks? We're going to take a look at these two titles and figure out are Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition and Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze Overpriced? Let's find out. Hey, RGT85. Hey, Sean. Oh my God, it's Stevie Richards! The first suspect on the docket is Hyrule Warriors. Now, Hyrule Warriors released back in 2015 on the Wii U and was a really cool game. It blended in things like the Dynasty Warriors style of gameplay with Hyrule and The Legend of Zelda, and it really brought a different look onto The Legend of Zelda world. And this was a game that I picked up on day one, and honestly, I was very surprised with the amount of content that this game had. I was surprised at the amount of things to do, the amount of levels to explore, the amount of throwbacks and nods to The Legend of Zelda history. And it was just a beautifully crafted game. I was never a huge fan of the Dynasty Warrior series, but it's like I never really got into it with the characters. I never related with the characters. I never felt, you know, a longing for those characters. But when you bring in a franchise like The Legend of Zelda that has so many timeless characters, it totally made sense for this game to happen. And the end product was excellent. They released a ton of DLC for the game as well that really elongated the experience. I put hundreds of hours into that game and I didn't even scratch the surface on some of that DLC. There was an adventure mode, a challenge mode as well, just tons of content. Now, the game also came to the 3DS as Hyrule Warriors Legends. And if you had a new 3DS, it was a no-brainer to pick up this game as well because they added in even more content. There was exclusive 3DS content as well. There was additional DLC with it and it was priced at $40. So between the two games, you had $60 and $40, not factoring in all the DLC packs. Now, Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition includes all of the DLC, all of the characters from all previous versions of the game. That's 27 characters that you play as. And more importantly, one of the most impressive features that was added into the 3DS version of the game that was not included in the Wii U version of the game is the ability to change characters on the fly on the map. So if you're doing a mission and there's two characters on the map. On the Wii U version, you were stuck playing as the main character that you chose. So you relied on the AI to hopefully, you know, defend the base or do what they needed to do. And you were really out of control when it came to them. On the 3DS version of the game, you could switch on the fly. And it just made things so much more seamless. It made things so much easier to handle and be able to, you know, really take control of the game. So when you're talking about adding this into the home console version of Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition, a lot of the people that played it on the Wii and might have skipped the 3DS version never had this ability. They also never played the 3DS DLC and vice versa. Maybe the 3DS owners did not play the Wii U DLC. 
So the fact that it has all the DLC from the game, it has all the characters from the game, it also adds in the ability of the, the 3DS version to switch characters on the fly, and it even has Breath of the Wild related stuff uh, for Zelda and Link, it just makes sense. This is a game that can be $60 because it's literally hundreds and hundreds of hours of gameplay. A fantastic game, a game that will last you a long time, and the amount of content in this game definitely makes it worthwhile. If they're sprucing up the graphics a little bit, that's just icing on the cake, and it looks like they are. Some of the character models definitely look more higher resolution than they did on the Wii U. So I'm totally for this because you have to figure in, they're redoing the 3DS DLC to meet you know, the Switch's standards in terms of graphics. So this is actually a lot of work probably going into this game. So Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition, is it overpriced? No. I totally understand where they're coming from with this. You're getting a ton of content and it is an excellent top tier game. So I'm totally cool with Hyrule Warriors. Now Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. That might be a little different bit of a story there. No, 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 don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze on the Wii U was a great game. It came out during the infamous Wii U drought. Now, what was the Wii U drought? If you were a Wii U owner, an early adopter of the system, you know exactly what this was. This was the stretch of months, literally months, where nothing came out for the system except indie titles. And I love indie titles, but you have to have retail releases in there as well. You have to have bigger games in there as well for the masses to enjoy, because indie titles are still kind of small for the most part. And Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze came out at a time when and there was nothing else out for the Wii U. So it was accepted with open arms. It was a fantastic game. It was beautifully crafted, excellent visuals, great music, a very challenging difficulty, and just a top to bottom, a very solid game. Maybe not one of the greatest games of all time, but definitely an above average great game that I honestly had a lot of fun playing. I loved playing it, but the Wii U version of the game wasn't anything really special. It didn't really take advantage of the system besides something like the graphics. Actually, the gamepad screen was black the entire time. There was nothing to do on it unless you wanted to play in off TV mode. And one of the big things about Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is how many units it sold. It sold nearly 2 million units. So a good portion of people got to play this game. But once again, I understand bringing this game to the Nintendo Switch. But you also have to remember what they're adding to the Nintendo Switch version. Whereas Hyrule Warriors is getting a whole slew of DLC and even exclusive costumes, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is getting fun. Funky Kong, yay! And essentially what Funky Kong is, is an easy mode for the game. Yay! Like, I get it, the game is very difficult, and there probably are younger users on the Nintendo Switch. You've probably already sold more than the Wii U, so it kind of makes sense to add in something that lowers the difficulty a little bit, because Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze could be a very stressful game. Probably not in the same realm as something like Cuphead, but it got close at times. It was pretty stressful, but a very solid game. And adding in Funky Kong makes sense to me. What else are they adding into the game? Nothing! That, that, that's it! Okay, you know, that, that's cool though, that's cool, that's cool. Obviously, this is not going to be a $60 game, right? It's not gonna be a $60 game, oh wait, wait, it's, it's a $60 game. And that's, that's where I have a problem, because Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, when it released on the Wii U, how much was it? $50, it was $50, it was not a full $60 game. So what have you done to Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze besides add an easy mode to it to make it worth $60 all of a sudden? Like I get it, it's a great game, but a 2D platformer releasing in 2018 that's about eight hours long, I don't think you can really charge $60 for that. There's not a whole lot of replay value with the game. There's not a lot of incentive to go back to it once you've completed the game. So it's a tough sale for me if they would have added some more levels if they would have done something different maybe added you know different elements different characters that besides just a simple easy mode uh, maybe I could see $60 but I don't know to me Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is overpriced you could pick up the Wii U version for $20 brand new right now or you could buy the switch version for $60 portability is important and I do understand why some people want this game especially those who might have missed out on the Wii U version but for me as someone who owns and played the Wii U version and beat the Wii U version I have no incentive to buy this game especially at $60 $40 maybe I jump all over it but $60 I'm sorry I feel that 
Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is simply overpriced on the Nintendo Switch. Now, of course, none of this really matters because it's just my opinion. What do you guys think of these prices? Do you think Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition is fairly priced? Do you think Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze is, over, is fairly priced? Are you going to pick up either of these games? Are you going to skip them and only pick up new stuff? Let me know in the comments section down below. And of course, thank you for checking out this video. If this is your first time here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that like button. Share this video with your friends. Give your friends something to talk about. Let's see some good discussion in the, in the comment section down below. Make sure you check out the description box. I got t-shirts. I got Patreon. I got social media links. I got a website. I bought a website the other day. I don't know why. I'm just, just like, hey, I'm going to buy a website. I got 75,000 subscribers. Why not? Why not? I love all you guys. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Later. RGT.